It's a great goal. Innocuous long ball. Welcome to the second part of the Claret's Review. Just before Christmas, Burnley are in a very respectable sixth position in the league. Burnley took the lead in this game through David Ayres. A superb free kick. It was only what Burnley deserved because they'd had the better of the chances early on. So could the Clarence capitalise on that and take all three points? Well, Burnley scored a second goal and it looked as though the points were safe. Kurt Nogan, the goal scorer, nipping between two players and slamming the ball home from Andy Cook's cross. But somehow or another, Swansea got a goal. Lone debutant Glyn Hurst from Barnsley lobbed a beautiful angled drive past Marlon Beresford, 2-1. But Swansea got an equaliser to make it 2-2 and it looked as though the points were running away from Burnley. But 15 minutes from time, Cook restored Burnley's advantage when he dropped back to receive Nogan's pullback and fired home the ball, 3-2 to Burnley. Could Burnley hold out? Well, they actually did better than that and made sure of all three points. Andy Cook snatched his second three minutes from the end to beat Freestone with a drive. Delirium for the Burnley fans and a vital three points. The start of a busy Christmas period for the Claret starts at home here today with a visit of Bristol City, who are just above the relegation area. A position which Burnley manager Jimmy Mullen describes as a false one. The Blackpool match on Boxing Day very much in the minds of the Burnley supporters at this moment in time. However, a win here today will be a fine start to the festive season. Chris Brass now for the Clarets, far side of the field. Nogan. And Cook just a whisker away. Taken away from him by the central defender. And that really was the real first opportunity for the Claret. Some good work from Nogan. Agostino. Left foot shot from him. There's a cracker at the billboards. The number seven. Be interested to see where the Clarets lie at the end of the Christmas period. If we can get the three points today and uh, win one of those away games, I think we'll be in a very handy position. Here's Kurt Nogan then, finding Cook. Turn from Cook, a good shot. Oh, and a whisker away from Andy Cook. Some good play there from the two strikers, and Andy Cook just turned and hit it a fraction wide. Turn from him, a great bit of skill from Cook. Played across the face, David Ayres couldn't just get there, but again, a quick burst of speed and a turn from Andy Cook with a good cross. Stanley to set the home side forward again is when he got cooking support. Still in Stanley, he's got Weller on that far side. Norgan to stand bowling for Ayers and a great was that a stopper? Did that come back off the woodwork? Looked like that was on the cards for the first goal of the game. And the crowd at last getting to life here at Turf Moor. Trying to switch play to this near side. Burnley's right with Paul Weller. Well as cross, a good cross, and Nogan heads way over the bar, unusual. Poor corner. Not in back to Ben Byron, should be the keepers, misses it, chance for Burnley. Joyce on the end of it. And there's Mayhem in the penalty area. Burnley claim for the penalty. The Bristol City fans signalling to the linesman who's seen something. Joyce making a decoy run. There's nearly picking him out. But it's not to be, and the referee decides that enough is enough. Nil-nil, it finishes. Disappointment for the Burnley lads this afternoon, I'm sure, have been looking for that three points, but it wasn't to be. And the game finishing, Burnley nil, Bristol City nil. 
A point for Burnley, but Jimmy Millen still coming under pressure from the fans. It's action on the field this afternoon. The Clarets will have to kick-start their promotion campaign against the old enemy here, Stockport County at Turf Moor. We all remember the playoff final when County exploded on the day and Burnley went forward into the first division. Times have changed now. The Clarets managed an excellent point at Edgeley Park early in the season. Burnley have had no games over the festive season, however. The last league encounter was on the 23rd of December, 1995. That was against Bristol City. Formerly of Preston, a good header and a goal goes into the back of the net. And it's Matthew Bound from that long ball from Mike Flynn. A nice nod on at the near post and Stockport take an early lead. Yeah, both sides have seen a lot of personnel changes since that uh, playoff final, as you were saying. With, uh... Here's Nogan, a shot which is blocked. Vinicum, a goal. 1 1. Chris Vinicum levels the score. On five minutes. A lot of people have thought whether they'd have the minds on that, but they don't seem to have at the present. And a great ball. It's gone in off the post. Mike Flynn, the former Preston man, gives Stockport County a 2-1 lead. Disaster again. And up for Nogan again, alone on and turns wonderfully well. And the shot comes in. And a super goal from Andy Cook. Two apiece. Terrific strike by the youngster. Burnley bouncing back again. Second time they've had to come back. And uh, a good layoff. And Cook cracking an unstoppable shot into the far corner. Well, an amazing match so far. Two goal, uh, four goals in 17 minutes. Just cuts inside to the inside left channel. Early balls from him. It's a good one for Eliwell. Across the face. It's in the back of the net. 3-2 to Stockport County. And Eliwell gets another. Well, obviously, they're quite happy uh, with the way things are going for them at the moment. Yeah, holding on to that lead. Nearly increased a couple of moments ago. Good clearance off the line again. Francis to the far post as and it's a goal. Nogan pulled back by David Ayres, headed in by Kurt Nogan. Yeah, Nogan not to be outdone this afternoon. Had an excellent first start, and there is that good knock ball, knock back by Ayres and Nogan on hand on that far post to give the Clarets that equaliser at three each. Fortunately for Edwards, he managed to grab all it, but for the youngster, could get hold of it. Harrison's header, Cook. Nogan's in there, so here too is Joyce, and here's John Francis, can he make it four? And he does, John Francis, the return of the man who was injured at Wembley, sticks Burnley in the lead. Terrific chip by Francis as he was put through there, as cool as a cucumber, and a little lob over Edwards, who's uh, not very pleased with his defence, and the Burnley boy is taking the lead for the first time. Win Stanley's clearance, and there goes the final whistle. A great win into 96 for the Clarets. With so much did they need it. Yeah, terrific. Well, in a game that never looked like seeing more than one goal, Rotherham snatched a late winner after seeing a penalty saved by Marlon Beresford. Chances were few and far between at Millmore, but the home side looked to have snatched the advantage nine minutes from time when Peter Swan upended Andy Haywood inside the area. Beresford and Weller protested, but Sean Goater it was who stepped up to take the penalty. He scored on the opening day of the season from a penalty at Turf Moor. Was he going to make it two then? No, not this time. A great save by Beresford, guessing the right way. Well, when Burnley should have kept things tight in the final few minutes, Gary Bowyer split the Clarets' defence and Trevor Berry raced through to give Beresford no chance. It was Beresford's last game for six weeks as he underwent a double hernia operation straight after the game. Hard one into the uh, near post. Peter Swan again gets his head and concedes a, uh, another corner to the visitors then. It's a curly, nasty one. The ball in the back of the net. And that was a, a real curler. And that puts Oxford into the lead. Comes in on 25 minutes. He's Kurt Nogan. Weller to take the return. Plenty of pace about Paul Weller. 
And a good cross from him. And Cook, well, he nearly got there. The keeper was in on him. And it results in a goal kick for Oxford United. A wee bit unlucky there, Andy Cook. Not to... Right, here's Quick Allen. Going wide to pull the ball back. And he nets Oxford's second goal. Tremendous goal from the second half substitutes. And really, that's the killer punch. There it goes. It's full time at Turf Moor and a disaster for the Clarets. Uh, a defeat of two goals to nil. And the goal scorers, well, it was Chris Allen who, who got the winner. Brentford will do well to survive this. David Ayres my, is, my, is my guess to curl it to Dearden's left. But this really is a great chance for Burnley. Ayres. Referee gets the wall back. David Ayres comes up. And a good save from Dearden from Gary Parkinson. Turned it over. What can Burnley do? Ayres can curl it. Well, this will be a nonsense goal to give away, or well, the referee is entirely right, he knows the rules. Great save. Still clear. And Dearden did brilliantly twice. Fantastic save from David Ayres and from the rebound. Forster. Forster's going away. From Canham. The Canham it was at the shot. It's still in there. Taylor. Forster. And it's scored! Nicky Forster has got his goal at last. Well, well may he celebrate and he took it brilliantly. The Arctic weather has gone. The jinxed fixture with Blackpool hasn't gone. That one's postponed once again. And three defeats in a row. And unhappy Burnley fans as well. And just when the goals have certainly dried up, enter Ian Elliwell from Stockport County. The 33-year-old will make his home debut here today after his £25,000 move from Edgeley Park. He himself caused a lot of problems when Stockport were here the other, way, the other week and his aerial uh, dominance proved uh, quite hectic for the Burnley defenders. Well, Crowley Crowley left. The cross from Binnicum and Elliwell's in there with his... First real opportunity on goal, very closely marked though, Ian Elliwell, but obviously he's going to be a problem for any defence. Yeah, entering yeah. into the game, it's a shame for Paul Weller, he took that knock which the referee uh, allowed to go, but uh, obviously not able to continue. Crew then, come forward. Rob Edwards trying to tee himself up, Edwards shot, and what a goal from the left-sided player. Rob Edwards was given oceans of room there and crew take the lead. Burnley paying the penalty, I think it was Jamie Hoyle and stood off him really and allowed him far too much time and space and a, a, a super shot really but just when Burnley had been put it piling the pressure on at the other end. No. Oceans of space there Rob, Ed, Rob, Rob Edwards and he probably thought he'd uh, be on for a goal and how right he was. Parkinson with the free kick, over to that back post, oh and a goal! Is it? No, it's not. From here, it looked like a goal. I'm sure the fans at the Ensley stand no would have said that was going in, but it was Elliwell. Really well. Outside yeah. right channel, inside right as he's gone to now. Ball played in by Joyce for Parkinson. Quality ball again needed, and it is one. Oh, and Nogan! Oh, he's just past the post. Kurt Nogan, look not with him this afternoon. Yeah, Nogan once again... Uh... Closest to scoring, just flashing wide of the post. A good overlap again by Parkinson, and this time the quality of the cross much better. Yes, and uh, nobody just finding the wrong Just here at Turf Moor, when the teams used to hardly get a point here. Seems those days have gone for the time being, and uh, the Oxford game was uh, hardly a classic. And Burnley threw away three points that evening. Rotherham and Brentford have also followed, so that's it. Crew. Worthy of the win, three points for Dario Grady's men and Burnley a little bit sorry at the moment. A fourth defeat in a row for Jimmy Mullins' men.
Yeah, very sad uh, epitaph on the game now, looking back over the 90 minutes, really Burnley uh, had one or two good chances in that first 20 minutes, Norgan, very unlucky, a brilliant save by the crew keeper. On the 12th of February, amidst mounting unrest from the fans and general criticism, Jimmy Mullen was sacked as manager. Mullen's assistant, Clive Middlemass, was put in temporary charge. Yeah, Adrian Randall's uh, arrival at York has uh, spurred them on to a few better results, but they're still in the lower reaches of the second division, so they'll be coming here looking to grab at least a point, I'd have thought. So Clive Middlemass in charge of the team as from today for the time being, and the applications for the Burnley post have gone out in the national press. And away go at York City, straight into the action. We're at Paul Barnes, pushing it over to that far side. Harry Atkinson's long searching ball. Good ball played in for John Francis now. Hasn't took the ball with him as yet. Francis, great ball in, and Joyce balloons his header onto the top of the crossbar. And that's uh, a letter, another a deceiving header from Warren Joyce. Quite good at those. Hello, well, but uh, straight into the number seven here. Now the chance on here for Paul Barnes and some goalkey. Oops, oh dear, a penalty. That's uh, Wayne Russell. I wouldn't have thought he touched him, actually, from uh, our position, Wayne Russell. But obviously, Barnes dived. Yeah, I think he'd have uh, earned uh, one or two Oscars at the uh, awards that go out every year. But... Uh, it's interesting what the referee... Barnes was running away from goal, so I can't see Russell being sent off, but uh, Barnes definitely playing for the penalty. I don't think he had any intention of, of going past him and then uh, and then slotting the ball, and he was playing for a penalty all along, but uh, I think it'd be very harsh if Russell gets a red card because Barnes was running away from goal. Steps up, and York City take a 1-0 lead. Comes in on the 12th minute for the... Good play from Kurt Norgan. Now, can he finish? Oh, and a block just came in from the number six, Paul Atkin. And Kurt Norgan was looking to score goal number 22 for him there. Yeah, terrific ball played in by Dowell and some, a great bit of skill by... Hoyland. Oh, and that looks like number two. And that has given and the attempts by Mark Wynn Stanley... Uh, to clear that one from the line, practically put his lights out there, he's tangled up in the net, and unfortunately now, barely trailed by two goals to nil. Five years ago, unbelievable. Parkinson's free kick, Win Stanley's header, and a goal for the Clarets. Mark Win Stanley reduces the errors for Burnley. Yeah, Joyce terrific header. Over Pepper, and here's Harrison, a chance for him perhaps being crowded out, and it would have been a good ball, it was Elliwell coming in in the back of the York defender. Here's Parkinson. Parkinson confident to take them on. And Parkinson with a left foot. Oh, and because it, it... No, and there's Kylie right at that near post there. And a good bit of play from Gary Parkinson. Yeah, poor defending initially. The York lad with a poor clearance. And uh, Parkinson, a good surge forward and a little one-two. Cuts inside. Very dangerous forward. Murty, oh, and that's the third one for York and Burnley in all sorts of problems now. A terrific strike, that initially uh, was a good break from Burnley, a terrific ball across for Weller. Win Stanley for Robinson now, far side of the field for the Clarets. Twist weaving, trying to get the fight in his way for the ball, still has it, cross comes in, oh, it could go in, it should go in, and it does go in, John Francis. It's 3-2, and Burnley have got a chance here. Terrific persistence by Robinson, who uh, wouldn't let the defender have that ball under any circumstances, and eventually got it across the box, mayhem in the defence. And... Robinson trying to creep some inches up there. Good through for Nogan. Now, can he uh, finish off here? He's going to... Oh, he scored! Kurt Nogan, three apiece! Terrific goal by Norgan, the defender really, I suppose he thought he had him in his pocket there, but Norgan skipping away from him and cracking a great shot into the corner. Amazing stuff, the Clarets have bounced right back.
Well, there's a full-time whistle, a point for Burnley and a lot better performance from the Clarets. Yeah, to half time they look down and out again, but uh, Mark was trying to give them that uh, lifeline, but then when York went up and scored that third goal... So, a point for Clive Middlemass in his first game in charge. Burnley's next match was away to Hull City, another side who were struggling. So Blackpool, only one defeat in 19, which is rather a remarkable record for the uh, Bloomfield Road side. Of course, news came out last week that a brand new stadium for Blackpool Football Club will about to commence, £100 million pounds worth. Blackpool seem to be on the high and Burnley will just have to stop the slide as we've dropped into 16th position in Ensley Division 2. Announcement will be made next week, of course, regarding a new manager here at Turf Moor. M Clive Middlemass and Terry Pashley continue in charge of the Burnley side then. As we synchronise our watches, Mr Lynch is the referee. Seen him on numerous occasions here at the Turf. And away we go. Two fixtures become so close together because of postponement of the Boxing Day one. No doubt one or two, uh, oh, quite a, a lot of fans have paid their money up front from Boxing Day of last year. Ball played in, Swan goes in with the head. No real power from Peter Swan. Eric Nixon really uh, just having to watch on his it's line It's going to be Thompson, former Leicester City player, to take this corner for the Clarets then. It's a good swirling one too, he just gets a hand to it, does Nixon, back for Ayres. Powers a good one in, Nogan with the header, just wide of the angle there. Not a bad effort from uh, Kurt Nogan, hasn't really had any service since he came up to 22 goals in the league, but uh, Preece on that far side, brought down by Swan. And Peter Swan goes back into the 18-yard box. Turns so well, Andy Preece, former, formerly of Stockport County, of course, and uh, no stranger to the Burnley players. High kick towards the back post. Morrison's up there, and a good save from Russell. And it was Andy Preece who was looking to get the opener for Blackpool. And it really was a nice fingertip save from Wayne Russell, the Burnley keeper, for Joyce. Thompson once again for up for Ayres. David Ayres does well. Bass Bryan, Joyce, Thompson, and a try a thumping shot from him straight in the arms of Eric Nixon. Hard shot, however, from Steve Thompson who was by far Burnley's best player at Boothbury Park last Calvin Saturday. Robinson. Now then, Liam Robinson with a shot from him. Oh, just over the top from the uh, Burnley striker. Not a bad effort, just outside the penalty area. Liam Robinson nearly takes the lead for Burnley. Yeah, from the Premiership days. Oh dear, now here's uh, Mark Bonner. Oh, and Priest, and that's in the back of the net. Andy Priest gives Blackpool the lead after a lot of good work by Burnley, and the killer punch comes in. Win Stanley.
The day the seaside came to Turf Moor and Burnley pointless again after a tough Lancashire derby. One goal settled it. Andy Priest was the man separating the two sides. And from Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Blackpool won. After intense speculation and media attention, Adrian Heath was appointed manager. He'd been away from Turf Moor only four months as assistant at Sheffield United. Adrian, would you care to say a few words about your appointment, please? Thank you. Obviously, I'm delighted to be here. It's um, a very proud day for me to come and manage the Burnley Football Club, club with the history and the tradition that it's got. I think it's coming at the right time. It's an exciting times. The new stadium is being built. I'm looking forward to making a go of it and being very successful here. It's uh, obviously the last few few months have been a bit of unsettling for the club, but hopefully we'll put that right in the next few weeks and uh, there's still plenty to go for this season. But over the next few years, I'm looking forward to hopefully taking the club where it belongs, which is certainly in the first division, hopefully the Premier League while I'm here. Any questions? Tell um, Not surprising, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> sure, and isn't as good as it used to be. We've got any questions, gentlemen? Please fire away, and then we'll go down onto the pitch. Adrian, was it a hard decision to take to leave Sheffield United? Very. Yesterday was uh, felt very sad, a little bit disappointed. Ringing our candle yesterday, as the chairman said, he's been uh, an idol of mine, not only as a player because I played with him as well in the early days at Stoke, but. Uh, Generally, he's brought me two or three times at different clubs, and uh, Sheffield United have been superbly the way they've handled the whole situation. I'd like to put record my thanks to them for allowing me to leave, but uh, I just felt that this was a chance, an opportunity that I couldn't miss. Not very often do jobs like this come available, and when the chairman offered me the post, I couldn't be more delighted to take it. Well, obviously, I was very disappointed ringing him yesterday saying, you know, I know we've only been here two and a half months and uh, <coughs> thank you for taking me there because it was a great opportunity for me at the time. But he understood and he, uh, he said to go away, I hope you do make a real success of it. And uh, he said, because you've got a great opportunity. And I think you realise that the opportunities to manage a club like this don't come along every day. Yeah, it's going to be a massive challenge, but something I'm really looking forward to. And the one good thing about a club like Burnley is you've got a chance if you can get it rolling. And uh, that's why hopefully I can intend to do is get the ground full again. Got two new stands are going up. It's going to be a lovely place to come and play. I just hope that players pick up the challenge and we can go forward together. And one of the questions that begs to be asked, when you were in the dressing room as a player at Turf Moor, you were one of the main characters enjoying the banter and the jokes. What's it going to be like going back into that dressing room now in an official capacity? I don't think we'll have much problems. I think they'll know who the boss is. You know, I've worked with Peter Reid, who's done the similar sort of thing, and it's not a problem. They know, they know it's got to change. It's not the same anymore. I'll miss the banter, mind, but uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I'll, I'll be okay. They'll be okay with me. I'll be okay with them. We won't have a problem. I'm obviously delighted. Um, it's been a, a, a difficult few few days, or actually a few weeks, since um, we, you know, put the advert in the paper. We've had some good re response. We've seen some very good candidates. If that, once again, that's the right word. Uh, I think overall we must have picked the best man. Um, I think that his football talents are obviously there for everybody to, to see, and I am sure that he will soon learn the other side of the business for, via. Clive Middlemass and, and, and everybody else. Um, so, you know, he's coming to a, a club with great tradition as manager, and we've had some good managers, and I am sure he will adapt very quickly. I won't make decisions here to please any of the players. I'll make it because we've got to get three points and make the club more successful. And, uh, you know, they'll have to be silly not to understand that, and I'm sure most of them will, it won't be a problem. It can obviously be a, a, a tentative few days, the, his first few days, but they are professional people and they will soon realise he's the boss. And, and hopefully, and I'm sure he's going to act as the boss. He has to do, hasn't he? It's his job. Final word, the fans have greeted the news with great delight. How big a boost is that, knowing that they're right behind you ahead of your first game? Well, it gives us more time, doesn't it? It's one thing in football. It'll give me time and I think uh, hopefully on Saturday, as well, certainly the first home game, 
we can get the lift that the, the players need. Obviously, it's the players that are the most important, and if we can give them a lift and make it a little bit more relaxed for them in the stadium and, and give them more of a, a confidence booster, then that'll be the most important thing, not the fact that I'm being popular on the bench. Are you still on cloud nine? Because on the day that you learnt you were becoming the Burnley manager, your wife gave birth to your first son. Congratulations. Yes, thanks very much. Yeah, it was a, it was a, a day I won't forget, the 6th of March, and uh, I'm going to make it continue. Good luck and cheer. Cheers, Pete. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your time, mate. So a winning start for Adrian Heath away to Bristol City. The next away trip was to Blackpool, glorious in the evening sunshine. But the night of the game was perhaps a foreboding for what was to come. No wins in eight matches.
I'm enjoying it. Obviously, it's, it's more enjoyable Saturday night than it has been tonight. <laughs> Obviously, uh, but no, I'm enjoying it, and it's uh, you know I'm going into work every morning with a smile on my face. Just hope that continues. A uh, bit more defending like tonight. I'm not so sure it will. Is it a case of the honeymoon period over now, and uh, that was a baptism of fire? Well, the honeymoon was over on Saturday because once you start playing football, then all the talking has to stop. And uh, you know, obviously, I'm aware of that. At the end of the day, results are the ones that's going to count. And uh, we were a little bit fortunate on Saturday to get three points. And I thought we were a little bit unfortunate tonight. Apart from a couple of stupid errors, I thought we were as good as them in every department. Are you looking to make big changes, or is it just a settling in period and, and consolidate what you've got? Well, yeah, I think we owe it to the players to, to see if I can get any improvement out of some of the players. But obviously, if we continue to make mistakes like that, we'll have to change things around. But uh, I thought there was one or two positive spots tonight. I thought Jerry Harrison was outstanding. I thought Steve Thompson played well. I thought Martin Stanley defended well. Um, but at the end of the day, you can have all the play in the world, but you don't win too many games if you concede three goals. And at the, the end of the season, or getting near the end of the season, your relegation worries aren't that much of a problem, and perhaps promotion's out of the question, so like I say, you're just going to try and consolidate. Yeah, we've got to take every game as it comes. I know it's an old cliche, but we've got another big game again on Saturday. We've got uh, Swindon at home, and we owe it to ourselves and the supporters to make it as difficult as possible and to go and get three points against them. And then we're away at crew a couple of days later, so it, it, it's not easy the next few games, but uh, that's the sort of games the players should be relishing playing in. If they don't, well, there's something wrong with them. Finally, it's fair to say the Burnley fans have welcomed you with open arms, haven't they? Yeah, they've been superb to me, and I think, uh, obviously, uh, I don't know if they'll carry on if they keep getting beat 3 1, <laughs> but uh, no, they, they, they've been superb. And if they can turn up in numbers like they have done tonight and get behind us, uh, we'll be OK. Adrian, thanks for your time. Cheers, thanks a lot. Cheers, Adrian. Thank you. All right, Adrian. Good to see you. Manchester City, Everton, and Aston Villa player, and he's come back to Turf Moor as the manager, player manager at that, although he's not fit as yet, and he does say. He will be fit for next Saturday's game at the Manor Ground against Oxford City. Oxford United. That's right. A tremendous reception there for inches who came out of the tunnel. His first home game in charge. I'm sure he'll be looking for the Clarets to uh, put on a good display against Swindon. Was, uh, game. That's right. Andy Cook finding his place up front. Kurt Norgan passing a late fitness test. So obviously inches looking at the twin spearhead will be able to do the business as he was looking for uh, Johnny Morris here. On a Thank loan deal from Tranmere, but that's just uh, fallen well, through in the last man, couple of days. Mark Seagraves at five, obviously a mate of Mark Wynn Stanley. Sean Taylor at six, seven, Mark Robinson. Paul Allen at eight, nine, Steve Finney. Ten, Wayne Allison. And eleven, Kevin Horlock. And now here's a chance for Nogan. And a good save, it hit the post. Unlucky for Kurt Nogan. And just a touch from Frank Tallier. And the post between them and a goal. Realistically, still a chance of the playoff position. Burnley's got to start winning and start here this afternoon. One win, one defeat for Adrian Heath so far. And this is Swindon. Oh, and it was a good save from Beresford. Number 11, Kevin Herlock, nearly uh, put the visitors into the lead there. The ball cleared away in a corner then. Yeah, just as Norgan missed a good chance a few moments ago, I think uh, Horlock will be ruining that chance as well. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And uh, just uh, when they seem that they've got uh, the impetus going for a move, it seems to break down. Now here's Gary Parkinson looking dangerous coming forward. Oh, and just in the nick of time there, Seagraves in on Gary Parkinson. And, uh, well, it looked like he was going to have a stab at goal there. Yeah, big gap opening there in the middle of the park for Parkinson. I think the Swindon lads expecting a, a pass spread out to the wing, but Parkinson seeing his chance and uh, a good run there through the middle. Here's Nogan. Back for Parkinson. Cross comes in and Joyce, oh, and a good effort too. And that was Warren Joyce, devious header from him and uh, just kept out again by Frank Talia. He tries to lay it off, but goes out of play. Ayres, first time rocket from him. Where's that going? Oh, it's in the roof of the net there from David Ayres. Uh, a good effort. Gets in a, a good challenge, but obviously still coming away on that far side. Paul Allen. Mark Wynn Stanley. Great play from the former Bolton central defender. Here's Nogan. Good ball for Nogan now. Can he find a player in that 18 yard box? It's Mark Wynn Stanley. Oh, and a shot from Wynn Stanley, which eventually found Cook, and he spooned it into the Ensley stand. Another bright Burnley move, though, there. And it, uh, as it came across, I think Cook, Wynn Stanley's miss it shot there. It, I think it hit Cook rather than Cook uh, aiming for the shot. I think Cook surprised there. 
Good ball from Parkinson. Finnicum. Cross comes in. And a header from oh, David Ayres. Glancing header wide from the Burnley man. Horlock. Finney. Oh, and he gives round his marker well. Win Stanley in there. The referee waves play on. Swindon fans none too happy about that, but it was a clean challenge from Win Stanley. Take this corner for Swindon Town. Chip, if you like. Allison. Wide of the post. Terrible miss, really, by Shielding Allison. The ball. Back for Robinson now. Good cross from him, and, well, it was a Burnley man there, cleared off the line. Marlon Beresford's there eventually, smother that ball at the near post. Thompson for Parkinson. Oh, that was a foul, surely, on Kurt Norgan? No, David Ayres now. Can he finish off? Here's Thompson. Oh, and the shot goes agonisingly wide at the far post, and, well, actually was Warren Joyce and not Steve Thompson, but... Uh... So, Adrian Heath, Claren Blue Army get a point against Swindon Town, and uh, a good performance, in the, as you say, in the first half, but the second half, well... Yes, Swindon coming back into the second period. For the possibly the best chance of the game were fell in that first few minutes one, and uh, Kurt Nogan had a, a great opportunity. But after that, Burnley found it very hard to uh, get into the uh, sort of rear guard of the Swindon defence. And Your fourth game in charge tonight. How are you liking management? Well, not very much after tonight. Um, once again, it was like the Blackpool game. Really, it was like deja vu all over again. We've we've played quite well, and when we've had the ball, we've, we've looked quite dangerous going forward, and we've kept possession well. But uh, you know, individual errors have cost us, and defensive slips have cost us those three points. When uh, really the, the score lines flattered them a little bit, but uh, in terms of it looking like we're going to win the game, we ain't going to win too many when we can see three goals. Have you always wanted to get into management? Yeah, yeah, although <laughs> I was so sure at the minute. No, it's, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying every minute of it and it's, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's a little bit better. I think I've realised after the short period, it's a little bit better when you win and draw than it is when you lose, but, uh, you know, we're, we're still in the early stages of trying to 
implement one or two things and it might take a bit of time but uh, I'm determined to make sure we get it right. Burnley's always regarded as a sleeping giant, is that one of the reasons why you went there? Yeah, it's always been a big club and you know I think all the managers be before me have, have gone there with the, with the hope that they're going to be the one who realises all that ambition and I'm no different than anybody else. Oxford away Saturday, how do you see that one going? Well, it's another hard game, We've, you know, we could have been a bit kinder for me with the fixtures, you know, we've played the three top teams in the last three games and we're away at Oxford who are, who are flying a little bit at the moment, so it's, it could have been a bit easier start, but we've got to play them sooner or later and as I've said to the players, if you know, we've got to roll the sleeves up and uh, look forward to the next game because it's the most important thing is the next game. Any new signings on the horizon before the deadline? No, we're hoping so, we're hoping to get one or two in. Uh, as I've said before, I ain't going to bring them in just for the sake of bringing them in. If they can improve us and they're going to be a permanent fixture for the next couple of years, then I'll do it. If not, we'll stick with what we've got until the time's right. Oxford are the form team of the division. They made it eight wins out of ten when Martin Aldridge set things rolling against Burnley. But no question about the man of the match. Oxford striker Paul Moody earned himself a place in the record books when he came off the subs bench and scored a hat-trick in 13 minutes. That was his first. The second was created by the strength and vision of Aldridge, but Moody's finish was spectacular. Before Moody could collect the match ball, Oxford's prodigal son Joey Beecham popped up to make it 4-0. And not to be outshone by Moody, Oxford's other substitute, Mark Angel, appropriately flew down the wing to set up his teammates' third goal. And although the celebration was more Laurie Sanchez than Hugo Sanchez, Moody had his fifth hat-trick in two years. of the attacks in this first period. The Clarets desperate this, this evening, of course, to get three points in the bag, Tony. Yeah, obviously, desperate uh, last three away games, letting all those goals in on the travels. And Adrian Heath is uh, obviously looking for his uh, lads to uh, start getting a little run together to ensure second division safety this season. And Burnley on the attack on that far side, a magnificent view up here on the new north stand. Uh, a bit of a fancy stuff there. And uh, 20 before Christmas, we thought perhaps he were on for 30, but uh, fortunes change for the Clarets. Nogan finds Weller now, the edge of the area. Weller puts a good ball in, and Mahon with a header just over the top for the Clarets. Another yeah. nicely worked move. Just got uh, minds crossed there with, uh, I think, Jerry Harrison trying to link, link up there. But uh, it's been mainly Burnley this, half, this first half, but uh, not enough chances really to uh, test the Bournemouth keeper glass. Now there's a chance on here for David Ayres if he can just get to that byline, puts the ball across, Casper's there for Bournemouth. He gets a second bite of the cherry, pardon the pun, and Ayres cracks one in again over the top. Yeah, obviously the fans have uh, turned out in quite in good numbers tonight, but uh, not a lot to cheer about as yet. That was a dangerous cross. The number nine, Steve Jones, heading, I think it's fair to be said, on the... Uh, side netting or perhaps it clipped the inside of the uh, post there 
Yeah, Jones, quite a late comer. I think he uh, didn't start playing his professional career until he was about 24 or 5. But Shea Bournemouth coming quite close to taking a, a shot lead. Mahon puts it wide for David Ayres. Looking for options here. Oh, and uh, a shot comes in from Thompson straight at Jimmy Glass. Mahon retrieves it. He looks on for goal here. Oh, and he shoots wide of the left hand upright. And uh, reminds me a bit of uh, the lad Shaw that Burnley got from Arsenal. And Mark Wynn Stanley with a heavily bandaged right kneecap. Here's Mahon now. Oh, what a good effort again from the on loan striker. He likes to fire him in. I suppose he'll get one on target soon. He had a new right under his foot and just managed to uh, clear it in the nick of time there. The corner comes swirling in and uh, a punch. Oh, and that's cleared off the line from Swan. A punch from Wayne Russell, which wasn't too convincing, it must be said. Here's Win Stanley. Nogan, well, he just can't get the brakes at the moment, Kurt Nogan. Weller does, however. That was rather a fierce <laughs> ball from uh, Jerry Harrison. Yes. Weaving away, ducking and diving on the right foot. The cross comes in, a good one. Oh, and Mahon's header. And Jimmy Glasswell, he didn't really have much to do there, but he was positioned well, was the Bournemouth well, the uh, penalty area there. And they say the number 11, uh, Brissett, as you say, just not uh, getting a clean connection, otherwise that could have spelt a few problems for Burnley. As the ball comes across to the far post, the header comes in and a good bit of defending by Swan and Parkinson puts the ball away. That's the most dangerous situation Burnley have had to cope with so far in this game. Again, his neck muscles around that one, but it's uh, too much of early goes to Young. He powers it up again. Wayne Russell here. Oh, and I don't like the look of that. That was a foul, surely. And uh, oh, brilliant start from Swan. And Russell brings him down. It's a penalty. Well, a strange referee, really. I mean, they scored. They've given the penalty, but uh, I think possibly Russell will be sent off as well after this for the foul. I think definitely Russell will be getting the red card, so it looks uh, very bleak at the moment for Burnley, but I thought the referee would have uh, continued and given Bournemouth the goal. Well, Wayne Russell, see what the referee does. As Tony said, he may send him off. Uh, and a, a great save from Peter Swan. Yes, he's got the red card, unfortunately. Not too visible from up here, but it certainly didn't look like a yellow one. Yeah, the goalkeeper's always going to get a red card in that position. I mean, about seven or eight yards out, and uh, David Ayer is about to pull that goalkeeping jersey on. And, and some changes needed to be made by Edwin Heath. Claret's down to ten men, and possibly he'll, uh, I would have thought, look to bring uh, Smith on on, the, on this left-hand flank to replace Ayer's. Never rains, it always pours. When you're down at the bottom there, things start to go against you. Bun. Well, it's just past the halfway mark in the second half and poor old Wayne Russell takes a walk down the players' tunnel. And David Ayres, well, he's done it before. He's played in goal for Blackpool. Oh, and it's been saved. It hit the post. Tremendous. Well, I couldn't really see. It certainly hit the post there. And David Ayres went the right way as well. Yeah, great reprieve there for the Clarets. Bournemouth, obviously, must have fancied the chances, not only with a penalty, but with uh, I'm not a regular keeper. And that's... Uh, Bishop's header. Bailey for Bournemouth. Foul by Bishop. And that's the full-time whistle here at Turf Moor. A point for Burnley. And finally... Russell kicks long. Looking again for Weller up there. Gets the header to Nogan. Nogan really does well. To the byline, Kurt Nogan. Oh, and the, <laughs> nearly an arm from David Ayres. He couldn't get there. And uh, that was the first time Burnley have merely made any progression on either flank. Yeah, for Stan Nogan's got away from his marker, but... Oh dear. That looks like a goal bound, and it's in... And, uh, well, what can we say about that one? Russell was way out of his goal mouth. 
and Bradford Thompson Joyce Mahon the seam really organised Burnley can't penetrate through the middle Kimomia now on that far side now for Bradford Harrison having to chase him all the way and he gets round his marker and this could be number two oh and that's an own goal from Martin Stanley and that man Kiwamia causing the problems on that far side and that's disaster for the Clarets yeah and, uh, with that ball across it was just like evaded David Ayres but apart from that hasn't had a lot of a lot to shout about at all free kick awarded to Burnley on that far side David Ayres uh, trying to get through some work there with two Bradford men on him goal that's Liam Robinson and that's really Pep the Claret's lineup up now yeah, the Burnley fans. David Ayres but that's really pulverized down by Jacobs Harrison nice float of ball into the area now then Jacobs Bishop oh oh the line surely a handball what has he given what has the referee given a penalty and a sending off yeah it must be a good header by Robinson who's uh, made all the difference and the Bradford City number six I don't know why he's turning around to uh, look at the ref because there was uh, no doubt about it saved a certain equaliser and now let's hope David Ayres can bang Burley's number two in well, Brightwell's gone. He walked down the tunnel before the, he knew what he'd done. That was uh, uh, Liam Robinson's goal-bound header. And David Ayres stepped up. 2-2. Two -two. <laughs> Tremendous fight by, by Burnley. And David Ayres gets the leveller. And the corner comes across from Thompson. Oh, and Bishop couldn't get his header to it. Harrison, the ball back in. Swan. Oh! Tremendous shot from, uh, well, I don't know who we think that was. Oh, and Burnley still coming forward here. Looking like a team possessed at the moment. Yeah, terrific effort by Harrison. Initially, uh, Bishop should have got his head to the ball from the corner. But I think we're going to have another red card here. Harrison's, uh, I think, already making his way back to the dressing room. That, that foul on the Bradford number seven. So both teams down to ten men now, and uh, really, Jerry Harrison... Hasn't been able to cope with the winger all afternoon. Left on the stopwatch. And this is a dangerous time. Oh, this could be Tommy Wright now. Oh, it's not going to... Oh, no, that's the killer punch. I do not believe it. With a minute left, Bradford City steal the show. After all the hard work, trail by three goals to two. That's the final whistle, and Burnley lose out. Really, they should have had a point and a great fight back in the second half. Yeah, it's a uh, poor first half performance by the Clarets and couldn't really argue the score. Stump Thompson straight into it, finds Ayres, left side for Burnley, Bishop now. Harrison, who had the misfortune of being sent off last Saturday against Bradford City, of course. Peters won free kick, but again, blue and white shirts seem to be there. Five men at the back as we said earlier and David Ayres now tries to break that five man defence and John Sheffield holds it on the second attempt and with the header Thompson Ayres for Joyce and ball in for Nogan now for Burnley Nogan trying to get the Ayres comes racing through here oh and it must go in yes 
A goal is Warren Joyce at the far post, and at last Burnley have broken it. Yeah, a terrific sweeping move there, and there's a terrific overlap on that left-hand side, and a tremendous cross coming in, and Joyce gleefully on the end of it, ramming it into that far corner to give Burnley that 1-0 advantage. Bishop's free kick. Clark's there, Ayers on the old left foot again. Good ball for Nogan. Nogan in a bit of space here. Can he cross over? He's going for goal, perhaps. No. And the goalkeeper pounces in. The ball, was it kept in? No. Corner, says the referee. Yeah, clever work there by Ayers. Picked Nogan out and he made a strong run there into the area. Looked as though he was going to go in on goal for himself, but uh, eventually blocked out by two or three Peterborough defenders. The corner to come across from that far side then. Thompson it is. Oh, oh, a goal, Peter Swan. Can you believe it? 2-0 to the Clarets. David Ayres in a spot of bother over there with Marcus Ebden. Ebden committed a foul on him and uh, he's getting a booking too, David Ayres. Yeah, an English booking there. I think Ayres a little bit of retaliation for that incident about five minutes ago, but uh, Burnley just need to... Uh, keep the composure and the concentration because uh, Peter will obviously be now looking to uh, bounce straight back into it but now with that 2-0 lead Burnley should hopefully be on the way to a, a much needed win free kick then comes across and Wayne Russell comes to it oh dear here we go that's a goal a needless goal given away by the Clarets Burnley have got themselves a 2-1 win here much deserved and we've waited a long time yeah, tremendous result for the Clarets. As we said at the outset. Ever been to a party where the drink runs out halfway through, the CD player breaks down and there's no food? Well, that was the county ground for you last night. The town fans came in their thousands. This was going to be the game, the win, to take the Reds back into the first division. This was going to be the big promotion party. Well, town had run out of steam by half-time, their goal-scoring attack had broken down, and there was no victory. One goal would have done it. Burnley were tough, they were stubborn, but they were there for the beating. Town tried everything, long balls, short balls, running balls, but there were no balls going into the net. On a better night, a luckier one anyway, Peter Thorne would have walked away with the match ball after a hat-trick. He went home with nothing, and the fans went home disappointed. Swindon went for everything, but the harder they tried, the worse it got. In the second half, Burnley held on. Swindon were missing the magic to find the winning touch. So the champagne is back on ice. Oh. On Saturday, town needs to stop. The 23rd of April was the date when this magnificent new 8,000-seater North Stand was opened. Bristol Rovers were the visitors here, but they didn't want to be in party mood. One of the most famous terraced areas in football, the Beale Terrace at Turf Moor, has been visited by many soccer fans over many years. But this week has been subject to demolition as the bulldozers moved in for the first stage of the work to be built a brand new East Stand. 
That's, of course, to match the newsstand which is opened here this evening. Uh, league match against Bristol Rovers. The stand to match this uh, superb view as we look right across Bake Up above the Bob Lord stand. Fans use the be-all for the very last time at the Peterborough game. That was 10 days ago. And many will miss the atmosphere generated on the infamous Turf Moor Terrace. A terrace which many fans have occupied for generations. The terrace fan is now something of the past as far as watching football at Turf Moor is concerned. And as you know, the North Stand opens its doors to the public here right now. Next season, supporters will arrive at Turf Moor to find a new all-seater stand to replace the be-all terrace. It will be a new experience for fans who are used to standing to watch their football and what's more, fans used to getting soaked to the skin like Jill on our letters page. You can now visit Turf Moor in the knowledge that elements will not spoil the match. Parkinson. Robinson. Robinson will take them on. Good ball for Nogan. Can he control and finish? Oh, he just couldn't get the foot in his claims. I don't know what he was claiming for, but he, he was practically there, Kurt Nogan. But he's just going to turn. And he's still looking to uh, distribute. He does so to Charlie Bishop. Nogan gets round his marker, Kurt Nogan, pull it back. Oh, and it would have been looking for Joyce at the far post and, uh, and then great play from Nogan. Yeah, Nogan looking uh, back to his sharpest tonight and uh, another great turn to go around the back of that defender and unfortunately though the uh, cross just slightly let him down but at least Burnley have another corner. So another corner from David Ayres then on this uh, Burnley right hand side. And the goalkeeper hasn't got a, a slight punch, but quite fortunate to the Rovers' defence. Here's Stewart. Just glided past uh, Mark Wynn Stanley, but uh, Charlie Bishop finds Gary Parkinson. Paul Weller now. That was a foul on Steve Thompson. Bishop plays it long. Out comes Andy Collette. He's going to leave it. And that's a free kick to the Clarets. The foul by the Bristol Rovers keeper. Not a very popular man at the moment. It will be spoken to, surely. Well, the keeper should, have, should be booked, really, for that. The referee's given the free kick. Paul Waller and Kurt Norgan's trying to take the kick quick, and the, the keeper's just trying to kick the ball away, so it must be a yellow card. Yellow card on a yellow shirt, and uh, that's the only, really, time he's been involved in this game, and... Uh, like you say, a booking for the goalkeeper. Yeah, Burnley just need to take the free kick now while the keeper's still talking to the ref. I'm sure they would if they could. <laughs> so it's a free kick to the Clarence. Then David Ayres will take this. Hopefully he won't put as much power on it as he's been known to do. Pledge men up there. We've got Mark Wynn Stanley on the six yard line there. Oh, it's, oh dear. As far as Charlie Bishop now. Seems a bit strange. The goalkeeper will be up for this one. The punch, which is not too good, but it finds Skinner. Wait for Burnley to go, go behind just to a minute or so before the break, but uh, a great stop see, on the edge of that six yard box. Here's Paul Weller for the Clarets. Ball that's again, Kurt Nogan steals in. Plays up, but uh, Mark wins. Stanley on a run here. Oh, and a shot from him. And, uh, well, Andy Collette was positioned in the right place. And it was a, a good run for Nogan. Yeah, the referee must be very brave right in front of the north stand there, not to give that decision. Come on, Kurt Nogan. Oh, taken away from him. There's no Burnley player up. Robinson again here in a central position. Gives him a return, and Gary Parkinson quite can't believe it. Mahorn's trying to shot it, takes a deflection and it's wide, a corner. John French has crossed, far side of the field. A powering header comes in and a goal for Bristol Rovers. And it's that man, Marcus Stewart, and a great cross from that right-hand side from French. A tremendous goal, superb 
right wing cross coming in there and Stewart. I think that was his 29th goal this season. David Ayres. David Ayres still going here. Good play from Ayres. Can he bring him down? Oh! Believable stuff there from the Clarets. And David Ayres doing everything by putting the ball. Peter Swan near down this left hand side. A very disappointing evening for Burnley. They go down by a goal to nil, Marcus Stewart. And as I say, frustrating. Yeah, you've got to say a very professional performance by Bristol Rovers. Burnley never really troubled the Bristol defence enough in, uh, in either half, really. Adrian, he tried his options of using Paul Smith and Paul Mahone in the second half, but it was all to no avail. A classic goal separating the two sides from Marcus Stewart. Well, relegation is now a real issue, and the next opponent's Wrexham had shared the spoils at Turf Moor earlier in the season. And suddenly Robinson's in the clear and he's finished! Well, that's a great goal. Innocuous long ball forward. Wrexham caught flat-footed and Robinson finishing with a plum. Well, just look at this. It's nothing really. It's just a forward ball by Smith. He's looking for anyone on rushing. And Robinson had burst clear. It sat up and Robinson finished beautifully. Throw in for Burnley. Thompson's come across. Here is Thompson, Robinson's dummy. And Hunter away. And with that haircut and that grimace, you wouldn't say no to him, would you, just at the moment? Free kick for the foul on Weller by Russell. You wouldn't say to, no to him either, would you? into the final minute and Thompson very carefully spotting the ball up they'll be happy to go in with this one goal lead at half time they'll be even happier with two and Nogan's provided it well that is a double blow for Wrexham and double delight for the Burnley faithful well I was just saying that Burnley will be happy to go in one up I can't describe to you how happy they'll be to be two up and the relief of that man, Kurt Nogan, who's finally ended the drought with a lovely head of past Marriott. With no threat of relegation after an important victory at Wrexham on Saturday, Burnley enjoyed their game at Warsaw, particularly so when Kurt Nogan headed in from the cross from David Ayres. And I don't think manager Adrian Heath will be too pleased with the defending that followed straight from the kickoff. Kyle Lightbourne threading a way through, firing a shot, Marlon Beresford unable to hold, and Kevin Wilson had equalised within 11 seconds of the restart. Lightbourne again proved to be a constant menace. Beresford denied him, and he unselfishly allowed Clive Platt to make it 2-1 10 minutes from the end. But his unselfish play was rewarded when he managed to find a goal for himself, right on the stroke of full-time, his 24th goal of the season. The last game of the season saw Shrewsbury as the visitors to Turf Moor, but the Clarence are safe and they won the game by two goals to one. Okay. Hit it. Oh, it's... <laughs> Med the room, med the space, but at the end of the day, the shot was <laughs> a mile off target. Yeah, Harry Shun once again, he'd done all the hard work and then, uh, as you say, firing that shot well wide. So I think the Clarence at the moment have left their shooting boots in the dressing room. Free goal kick from Edwards, just to the halfway line. Ayres intercepts it. Nogan plays it well, finds Ayres. Good cross from Ayres to the back post. Robinson up there, and a goal! That's Paul Weller. Gets the first goal for the Clarets, and some good play on this left-hand side. Yeah, tremendous work done on, that, on this left-hand side by David Ayres. Hey! If we can hear the... If we can hear the uh, Commentary over this uh, great uh, noise that the Burnley fans have generated, but uh, on this afternoon, of course, he had a hand in that opening Burnley goal. 
it's going to be Ayres to take the corner then and in swinging one oh and that was Peter Swan heading against the bar and that's just over and uh, again some great play from the Clarets and uh, a wee bit unlucky there featured of late in the first team squad but uh, obviously a valuable member of that squad when he is there and Shrewsbury at the edge of the area here this is Curry puts the ball across dangerous one and a goal that's the equaliser and really just before the break it's certainly what Burnley did not want goals it will especially away from home with the defeats by three goals to one at Crewe and Blackpool and then also by five goals to the Lett Oxford where the home side scored an amazing four in the last 20 minutes Smith with that after that great run of goal Marwin Stanley he deserved it he started it and he finished it yeah when Stanley who uh, likes to come up from the back in those uh, set pieces came up there a terrific cross Curry to take and that is the final whistle Burnley go out of the 95-96 season with a win yeah, great way to end the season for the Clarets. Uh, hard work victory. One point it looked as though we'd have to settle for the draw, but Martin Stanley coming up with the goods in the second half to end the season on a high note for the Burnley boys. Well, surely Houdini would have been very proud indeed of that escape. But let's hope for better things in the future from a great club with a great tradition. And surely with Adrian Heath at the helm, the good times are just around the corner. Thank you.